Can I run him? Excuse me, mate. Can you adjust your shorts? You've got a bit of ball sack showing. Oh, oh pee me, puddle. Save me, I'm drowning. Hey, there's a woman over there in double D stress. <whistles> Looks like she's got her own flotation device. Podcast number two. I'm We're back. back. We're back again. Mr. Bicep. Mr. Bay, watch the lifeguard. This is in tribute to you anyway, Pete. So I thought I'd uh, I'd wear a bit of uh, yeah. lifeguard stuff for Regretting you. Regretting telling you that story. <laughs> huh? You'd be a fireman next week. Yeah. I know, yeah. God, with my big hose. Anyway, we'll, we'll quickly breeze on past my big hose. I'm very, very pleased to announce we've got two new guests tonight. We've got the lovely Nicholas Bundy. Lovely, yeah. Thank Lovely you. Nicholas Bundy, Very the much. YouTube sensation. And we've also got from <laughs> Nipex, Mr. Davros Barnes. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So very, Thank very you. big thanks for coming on the podcast. I know Pete's excited to get you guys on. <laughs> <laughs> He's always very excited An over An electrician. There. Wow. Careful. You know, you've both got big biceps. You've both... I'm in the middle. Both <laughs> YouTubers. You know, me and you are just... We're just low down on the rung here. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. So I thought I'd get you guys on. I've always, always, always wanted to have a chat with you about your YouTube because I've sort of, from afar, admired it, watched it grow. Almost probably from day one, really, isn't it? It's probably not, not too far off. I'm pretty sad because I just watch everybody's bloody stuff. I've got yeah. no life. The, miss, the missus doesn't really like me. Everyone. So Everyone's. Yeah. Right. You know, he's got stats on us all. Has he? He analyzes influencers. So he's checking yeah. you out. He's, he's it right says PB geek. Plumber, three out of ten. He's a right geek. <laughs> says PB as long as you can't see our search history, we're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Why is I Unilight mean. so shit? <laughs> Motherfuck. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll, breeze, we'll breeze past that. So I thought I'd get you guys on. Your products, Nipex, absolutely fantastic. I know loads of our viewers, listeners, they love the stuff as well. So I wanted to get, much, yeah. get you on to talk about that. So we'll start with you, Nick. Okay. YouTube, Nick Bundy, how did you sort of come about to where you are now? So I, I did the same with Pete sort of a couple of weeks ago, yeah. talking about sort of Pete's journey, which I hate saying the word journey because it sounds like some sort of this is your life. But just is this, but it is pretty much a journey to where it is now, though. Like it's it, like yourself, it's it's a it's a long process from you can do I can do the short version, the long version. It's it's almost a sad. How long we got, Pete? Yeah, quickly. <laughs> Get the little violins out. So. I wanted to do, from leaving school, I'm not very academic. I'm quite dyslexic, so I hate reading and writing. I really detest it. Good at maths. I've got the good part of it. Yeah. Um, my grandma was a carpenter. My dad was a painter decorator. So I wanted to do trade-based stuff. I'm good with my hands. Started doing carpentry with my granddad. I, need, I know not to hit the table. I know what that's like, sorry. Um, He's been hitting the table I know. since we started. It's literally the, hello. Um, what? And I can't, why, haven't you, why haven't you told me about this? Because just then people say I'm getting on at you. Oh, your hands. Oh, come on. You're fine. Come on, I'll wear this T-shirt for you, mate. 70, 70 quid, this. 70 quid. Amazon get to do stuff cheaper. It was off Amazon. Oh, I've got nice. two. I've got one for him, but he doesn't want to wear it. I wore the T-shirt. It's just the little cap. Yeah. And the, speed, and the red Speedos. You'd be wearing that Elex. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Elex. Good Rock that. <laughs> Nipex stand. Yeah. Nipex stand yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be like that. No, no, no. We don't know this guy. <laughs> I, put a, I put a pair of the biggest Nipex down the Speedos, but they kept falling out. Otherwise, I would have wore them. Oh. Plums for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can you use Nipex for anything, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> anything. And um, yeah, so I I went to be a carpenter, went to college, went to sign up, and they turned around and said, you've got good grades, because my mom and dad really, really did push me to do revision, to do all the school stuff, which I detested. 
And they went, oh, you've got good stuff. Why don't you try electrics next door? And I was like, oh, all right then. And my dad being in the trade, he was like, you know, you were in more being a spark than you do a carpenter. That was pretty much dad. Nick, go over there, do that. I was like, oh, okay. So was, you, was your dad a carpenter? No, dad was a painter. Right, okay. So he was the lowest of the low. Yeah, um, you can't call your own dad a painter. Surely it's decorating. Need to jazz it up. Wow. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it worked well. So I, I went and did the course. I ended up, couldn't get an apprenticeship. There's no, there was nothing around my area at the time. Uh, did what was a three year course. You could have easily done it in probably three quarters of a year, if I'm honest, but they made you do two days a week every week and it was just it was really like pulled apart taking too long but then in the, i was doing work for free with different sparks around the area it's a domestic bit of commercial agricultural stuff enjoyed it all worked for a company that treat me like absolute shit to be honest with you um was that while being an apprentice as well well yeah not accident an actual apprentice but working for free and then i did get a paid job with them like really 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 low paid um and the guys just took the piss they would go and sleep in the van get nothing done, the boss would come around, why haven't you done stuff? And it was all my fault. I hadn't done the stuff properly. Or the, and it just went on and I was just like, fuck this, I can't. And I was doing a job at Tesco at the time in the evenings to like to run my car and everything. Ended up having to do my level three, was like year three in an evening course with, with fully grown men, like with kids and mortgages. And it was like a time where it was no more messing around. It was like, they're here to learn, like you have to get on with it. And I was like, oh, okay, head screwed on a bit. And then I went self-employed from then, carried on through the years just bumbling around by myself still lived at home no mortgage no kids or anything like that so everything i heard it was pretty much beer money or holiday money or just mess around stuff um until the point where i met me the raft i was like actually i need to pull my finger out yeah i need to get a mortgage you know i started doing it all and the, for two years straight it was going great like i was building up building it up building it up and then my dad got it's, this is a, the sad part my dad got diagnosed with cancer um went through all that with him as we bought our first house and he passed away uh may time like and then but my daughter was then due six seven weeks later Fuck. so missed all that part of it which, which sucked ass it really really did and and it was a massive part but i there was no period in between that of grieving for my dad to then being a dad mm. and then then it gets even worse like i went to a stage where my one of my good friends moved in behind me he'd broken up with his with his other half and this was within a, about a two three month period and um we asked him to be godfather like spent a lot of time with the kids really great and then i found uh found him after he killed himself Shit. uh the week after oh. that so it's like to a point i just couldn't it was up and down up and down up and down because obviously i want to be happy that i'm a dad and enjoy the family mm. but trying to go to work to pay the bills but it was just like it's it's hard to describe like you know you need to do it but you didn't want to i just didn't want to do anything I didn't want to talk to anyone i didn't even want to speak to my own family at the time mm. um and then it just got worse my friend's funeral was on the friday and then my brother's wedding was on the saturday so i went to my feet like carried my mate and then had to celebrate my brother's wedding the next day and then something else happened which i can't really talk about and uh i was literally just like the that following year it was just like what do we do? Mm. I hate going to work. I didn't want to speak to anyone. And it was by chance, I just on Facebook one night and I stumbled across one of CGR's videos, Chris. I thought, oh, interesting, like YouTube Spark. Never seen it before. I don't really go on YouTube for this sort of stuff. Like, fair enough. And, uh, and I'd watched a few more, a few more, found Jordan, found all the other guys. And uh, I thought, oh, sod it. I've got an old GoPro. I'll, I'll give it a go. You know, why not? Enough to lose. I hate going to work anyway. Yeah. And instantly from the first time I did a video, I was like, I really enjoyed that. And then the next time I was looking at getting a new product to try out or this and that and experimenting. It literally led into me absolutely loving going to work, loving what I'm doing. YouTube then appeared out of nowhere. I then got an apprentice and then it led to all of this as we speak now. It's, and that was, that all happened. My dad died four years ago to the point now where I've never been as happy. Got kids, well, the half mortgage, work, apprentice, everything's going great. So from such a, horrible place to the best I've ever been. It's ridiculous, really. I mean, do you think for me, because listening to that story, do you think that's the reason why you have that connection with Adam? Yeah. Because you were mistreated. Yeah, you, oh, yeah. You, because I know Adam anyway. <clears throat> so Adam, we've been family friends for years and years and years. Um, Adam's the apprentice, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> sorry yeah, to everyone listening. Yeah. <laughs> if, if the people know who I am, they know who Adam is. Yeah. Um, but when he jumped on board, he, I just treated him like I wanted to be treated yeah. as from day one. You, like 
hear so many stories of that. I mean, you, your experience when you started, it was a good one. But the, the amount of people that I hear where apprentices are sort of like, you know, just discarded or they're just... Yeah, they're, they're, not, well, they're not respected, are they? They're mm. not shown how to do the job. They're yeah. just given menial tasks to make the mm. other guy's day go faster so he can get home. Yeah, push paid. this, get this from the van, yeah, stir this Which milk. is not what you want for, when you're an apprentice. You want to learn as fast as possible, mm. um, which you can't do when people just tell you to fetch stuff and taking yeah. the piss out of you. So, so, so why, you, you two are both tradies. Why do you think that that still happens now? Because like for, for me, everybody that comes to work at our place, you know, I want people to feel... That's because that's because you're the boss. But if you're working for a firm and the guy who's training you isn't the gaffer, all he wants to do is get to work get done, get paid and go home. You don't care about the company, the, you know, growing the company. He just wants to get his money and go home. If you're working for a one man band, then the, the boss is more invested in you because he, he needs you to earn him money. Yeah. So for a small one man band firm, it's great. But if you're in a company, it's different, different scenario. Completely different. Yeah. Cause a lot of the lads where I can't speak for everyone, but for bigger firms, let like you say that, you work for a guy with 50 electricians and the apprentice comes on board and a guy who's in his 50s is then gets lumbered with an apprentice. He looked at it as like, a, oh, God, say, like, whatever. Like, I just wanted to go to work and worked on. And it's literally just getting stuff through and from, to and from the van and that's it. But with us guys, I appreciate Adam. He appreciates me. Like, I want to show him how to do, do stuff and to learn. And it's little proud moments when he does stuff and I can sit back and go, oh, I taught him that. Like, And he's, he's come on leaps and bounds, but it's, it's difficult in different businesses really I, I don't know why you'd have an apprentice like, and not want to transfer some of that knowledge especially if you're 50 mm. like you're getting to the end of sort of a career for me personally i'd want to sort of transfer <laughs> yeah. some of that knowledge um, i feel exactly the same. Yeah. it totally <laughs> baffles me and yeah. then when i see it and there's also kind of like again i'm kind of like a spectator on it like i'm not in the trade but it's kind of like a bravado about it as well which i just find really weird yeah like you see some of these channels like making fun of it and i just mm. i personally don't really get it Mm -hmm. um, do you find it, do you find it as well with when we found i think this is all before youtube but if you found a very cool way to fit a boiler back in the day it, and you could do it in a quick way in a nice way guys would keep them to themselves but nowadays are we finding tips and tricks it's shared throughout everyone like so we can tell people you can do this better and do this better but back in the day it was you're the competition so the guy lives next door or in your area but like with the apprentices, you don't, they, a lot of lads never told him everything. It's like, I'd tell him everything. I give him my iPad, he goes through Tradify, he goes through how he knows how much jobs are, how to price jobs. Like he will at one day probably be my, my competitor around the area. Mm. And that doesn't bother me mm. because you, your own worth, you, the, your people around your area become your uh, customers because of you. And if I'm losing it out to Adam, then he's done a better job than me at selling himself. I, I don't ever think it's like, I, I, for me, if Adam ever went on his own, I think, He's he wouldn't see it as competition with you. No, it's no, just no. He he would want to potentially be yeah. his own boss. I, I'm sure there's if you've been mistreated, you probably if you did go on your own, probably oh, yeah, thinking, well, like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take yeah, all yeah. Of your business. But I, uh, for for me running a business, yeah. I never quite understand why you'd want. Like we're pretty open here. We tell everything to the staff. This is what the target is. This is what we've done. These are the best sellers. Like you know, Nathan's got access to certain things, so's Jack, it's it's quite open here. Yeah. Considering so. you just ran around with two balloons up your top and a wig on, <laughs> <laughs> I, be, I believe what you're saying, mate. <laughs> what I found is before I started doing social media, if you went into the plumbers merchants, wouldn't talk to anybody, talk to the people who work there, but other plumbers standing around, you probably just nod your head. Yeah, so yeah. But now I talk to them, they see my social media, I work with them. Um, do you find it strange as well because I before I started social media especially like you say you would nod at them that's about it but a lot of the guys around my area have been sparks we in Stafford we probably have about 20 sparks really ta in, a, in a town which isn't a massive amount but it's, it's it's a good enough where there's enough work for everyone but they would walk in and go all right and it's all like it's competition it's literally they almost look at you like you're my enemy you're taking money away from my family yeah almost as soon as I started social media everyone wants to be my friend like yeah. everyone in, well, I say everyone in Stafford, most of the Sparks in Stafford will come and have a chat and ask about it and whatnot. Whether or not they think they're slightly threatened to go, if I go around your house where you've done this fuse board and I know there's not something quite right, like I'm going to slander them. That's never going to be the case. Mm. But I don't know if it's a sign of respect they do or a sign of fear, do you know what I mean? Yeah. In sense of way, like it's it's, a, it's an awkward See, I, I would have thought maybe sometimes because I see some of the comments you get, especially where as you've grown, some of the 
some of the shit basically that people come yeah. out with and think it's okay to say. Yeah, people are, they're always trying to look for you to trip up or they're trying to find the tiniest bit of fault. You know, they'll zoom into a pit just to try and get mm. one up on you. But the thing I had with a local guy, so I went out to a boiler that had been fitted, not unsafe, but not right. And it was in the winter, so the condensed pipe had frozen. And I was just out on the roof and I was like, this is why it's frozen because he's done this and he's took it into a cast iron gutter and it's not right. Didn't mention the company name. You, all you could see was the roof and this pipe. So you wouldn't have known what house it was, where it was, apart from being in my area, obviously, because I was there. And I got a phone call off him saying, you better take that video down. You don't know who I am. I'll come and break your legs. I was like, mate. He's only five foot four. This video is to, it's is like to educate, <laughs> educate Is that the guy people. at the swimming pool with Tourette's? Tourette's, <laughs> Frank. But, you know, I'd say to him, it's, I'm not, I've not called you out. I've not told anyone who's fitted it. Obviously, you recognise it as your job, but... That's the only only sort of bad experience I've had locally. Everyone else seems to be to be sound. But I had one recently, a video I had to take down. Um, went to a guy's house. Long story short, didn't the ICR? It was a rental. The person that rents it is the person that did all the work. And over the long story short, yeah, I asked his other half, can I film it, everything like that. Because all the stuff we're picking out, we're ripping out and fixing anyway. Like, so it doesn't really matter as much, but it was a good little video of a showing younger apprentices like this is the stuff you will find this is how we're going to fix it very yeah. simple little tasks uh put it out rang phone rang saturday morning bloody half six or whatever it was off the guy i was like oh, all right mate take the video down now it's like what so take it down now he says you made me look like a right mug i was like first of all the other half said it's fine second of all you're not you, we never mention addresses customers names we never show photos in the background like mm. in like the no one would know at all unless it was that person's house. It was their house. I ended up just taking it down because it was just too much of a ball like, to argue with him. Mm. For like, I had permission, but it was just like, you were just embarrassed of your own work. That's why. It's because you messed up. And yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's a, touchy, a touchy subject because I know you're going to need to get a lot of permission off some people, like commercial areas and whatnot, which I don't do. Most households, if I say, can I just film this? It's for this reason. I try and explain it. Most of them just go, I don't care. It's fine. But then some people are like, oh, yeah, well, we let me know when it's up and we'll review it and everything. And you're like, yeah, it's fine. Oh, as soon as you put it up and they say, can you take it down? <laughs> just all that video editing on a Sunday, yeah, Pete, yeah. could you imagine it? I did a job um, and it was a boiler replacement and I was talking through why the boiler had failed. It was a relatively new boiler. What was wrong with it? Basically just like breaking down the install into the problems, why it had f killed the boiler and why I was fitting a new one. And the guy who fitted it recognised it. He didn't say anything at the time, but now I work with him. We do some jobs together and he never lets me forget. Mm. And he just says, oh, yeah, you ripped into my install not, one it's time. It's not Craig, is it? It's not Craig. <laughs> His name's Ben. He's a real nice guy. But I, I said to him at the time, I said, I wasn't slating it. I was just explaining why, what had gone wrong. And you never know, like I say to everyone, you never know. When you watch a video of a job, you don't know the backstory at all. You Because we do this job to make money. Yeah. So you're in that property and you're fitting something that the customer has agreed to pay for. So whenever someone looks at a job and says, oh, why didn't you do that? Or why didn't you renew that? Or why didn't you fit this oh, boiler? Right. Well, because the customer didn't want to pay for that. I'm not a charity. I'm not going to, you know, put all this extra stuff in that yeah. you think I should. Because if no one's going to pay for it, then... Why should I do it? Yeah. This is the problem with YouTube as well. What we show is a very small percentage of the job, isn't it? Yeah. Like a very small percentage. And if I was to walk around and explain 100% of the thing of me going to quote what the customer said, what I've written down, the video would be four hours long. So we only show clip it as well with electrics. Maybe it's a bit different to, 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 to plumbing. Obviously, you wouldn't want to show all your gas work off, but how we do things start to finish, you don't want to show 100% because I don't want to show to the DIYer down the road that he's going to go, I'm going to change my fuse board. Nick's done a fuse board change from the point of an old one all the way through to testing it because then anyone could do it mm. with a bit of half a brain sort of thing. So we only show bits throughout the day, throughout the jobs, and then you get the person saying, oh, why didn't you do this or this bit? Or you didn't do this. It's like, well, I did. I just didn't film it. Or, <laughs> yeah. Do you know? And it, it's the comments like that. You just think... Like I fitted an outside socket, the one I did my back in with, and I had a customer, uh, someone literally comment saying, I can't believe you fitted sockets outside, that's so dangerous, what if someone plugs something into it? I was like, it's the whole point, isn't it? It's an outside socket, <laughs> mate. Like, and it's stuff, I just can't it's reply IP, to right? it. It's oh, it's I did a video recently, it's got like 100,000 views, and everyone <laughs> was obsessed with this black piece of plastic that just finishes off the mm. clip rail. Why haven't you put that on? It needs that on it. You know, where is it? The system didn't even have any water in it. You know, yeah. I'd shown a, a specific a 30 second video of part of this job and they are, you know, because they've seen something that they can say, you've not done that. Yeah. Well, I've not done that because the job's not finished. 
Surely it's more important well, than there's water people, in it. I just don't get yeah. well, I understand what they get it, out of it. For, for me and you, oh, I, I just... Yeah. It's a different world. Unless when, Once you're there in any, I never understood this until it started to grow a little bit. Of I've watched YouTube videos in the past, not the Sparks guys. I mean, like, you... you you could YouTube anything, isn't it? How to fix an oven, how to so know, who, put who, laminate flooring down. For, for you as a YouTuber, and, and for you as well, who, who? just a quick question. Who is somebody then that you've watched videos? It doesn't even have to be a, another spark. Who's somebody that you look at and you're like, I love their videos because they're always Col intrigued. Col Colin Furs, you ever seen him? Oh, yeah, he's still squatting. He built an underground bunker in his back garden. Uh, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've only recently, it was in lockdown, I started binging it. Uh, just in case the apocalypse <laughs> Mate, and he, he's, he's so crazy but clever and he's so witty with the stuff isn't he yeah. and, and he's it, the stuff he builds you wouldn't even dream of like you say he just bought his house thought in the garden i'm gonna build a bunker back of the garden in a field dig around dug this out made it welded it and obviously throughout the process of his youtube getting bigger he's on over 10 million subscribers yeah, or something like this yeah, he's massive and then he's just recently the videos his eyes little then he's like oh get him, get him a union like, like, i'll have yeah. a look on that influencer software and, uh, <laughs> and it's like it's like merch he always wears a shirt and a tie even though he's welding stuff or he's digging holes and then his his recent project he's dug down straight down in his garage and then he's connecting his house to, to his the bunker. garage to the bunker uh, all underground pass and it's yeah. so cool that yeah. sounds cool it's do you phenomenal. honest question yeah do you watch other YouTube's electricians? Spots. Yeah, yeah. So I actually talk to them all. Ninety-nine percent of them, like the, the, I was, the there's the top guys, which I'm part of. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I'm saying? What a uh, knob. Yeah, <laughs> facts. Yeah, it's very similar. Um, so there's the top guys, the guys that are sort of in the middle, and we're talking like ten to twenty thousand, and then there's guys that are just starting off, yeah. a couple of thousand. I sort of speak to the middle to upper, and I'm not saying I don't. I've watched the the smaller guys. There's just a lot of them now. So when I first started doing it, there's about four or five of us. Now, obviously, people are jumping on the bandwagon. There's you probably have seen there's there's, there's 50, 60 channels now, Sparks channels. So it's very yeah. difficult to watch them. The other guys, the guys I speak to, yeah, I watch their stuff quite regularly. There's gaps where I have two or three weeks where I don't watch anything, where I haven't got time for YouTube, and when I've got like an evening off or the other off watching Love Island, I will watch a video yeah. like some of John's, Chris's, Maggie's, that sort of stuff. So. It's nice to see how we all do things differently because I only did it because of these other guys. Yeah. Like, literally the threes that I watch it's properly. Similar to you, isn't it? I'm is completely you? different. I don't watch any of the others. What I will do is uh, when they've got a new video, I'll go on it, give it the thumbs up and just put a comment, nice video, even though I've not watched it. <laughs> Please. I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, but that's your work. That's your work. As a YouTuber, that's So you don't even his... like my content. You just That supports lovely. their channel, gives them the like, gives them the comment. And it adds to the algorithm as well. I'm not in, I don't know. I'm not interested in watching videos about plumbing. I don't even like my own videos. But you did say on the last show that you watch say people like Tony Dumble and stuff like that and you see how they Yeah that was do. so that was when I started Instagram. Like yeah. I saw them the work they were doing because that was when I was new to social media and that inspired me to to, to sort do of stuff up my it? game. Yeah. But gives you ideas. I've not got time. Like I finish work, I go to the gym and then I eat and then I fall asleep. I Can don't go to the gym. I've not got time you work to out. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Even I went <sighs> <laughs> so boring every, front, every time front double boys I've not I don't know I've not got the I suppose I should watch them because it in like you say it's like my competition see what they're doing but I don't, don't do, you, do you see it as competition no when you them. watch when you watch the videos because because for me like whenever I watch something it's normally because I'm trying to educate myself yeah. so I never really see like even even if I was looking at a lead lens video scan grip video like I don't really see anybody as my competition. Scandrip videos are awesome, by the way. If you oh, yeah, the one that you sent me the other day was yeah. really nice. Yeah. Their yeah. stuff's like black, black powder coated metal, no yeah. yellow crap. Yeah, it costs about four hundred quid, Pete. That's Decent right. gear. It's like, the, it's like the nip. I like how you're looking at me <laughs> yeah. as well. Like, scan, watch it. Scan not, it's like, do you know what? Do you know what? It's not German though. So I'm Pete, not interested. Pete won't touch it. You won't touch it. <laughs> no, not interested. You won't touch it. Either will you, Nick? Yeah, dealt with. Dealt with. What's the other one? Lead lenses. They're good as well, aren't they? Yeah, they're German. Yeah, lead lenses. Uh, now, now we're talking, mate. Now we're talking. The only lights that I used to use before really using your stuff, I mm. I've got the Bosch stuff. I remember buying the 18 volt Bosch stuff before it was LED, and literally you get like that, and that's it. The little bulb's gone. Yeah, you can't use it. Halogen and, bulbs, man. And, and it was one of the head torches. The one that I sent a picture of you the other week. Mm. The I just got it out of the van, and it was one of the very first head torches, which was a uni light one before I knew who you guys were. This was six, seven years ago. Mm. Must have bought this light. Used the hand, hell off it, and I thought I'd lost it. And it was actually in my old van. It fell down behind the racking. Yeah. It's the only reason I found it because I got obviously got a new van. Um, but it was just 
tacky twelve pound torches off Amazon. I used to buy and they would never do anything. So I'd, most yeah. of the time I'd walk around with my torch out on my phone in the lofts. That's what, what it used to be. What's the um, the tall, pl you know, like the plastic? What's that one called? Mitch Rumpy. It's quite it's quite an old <laughs> quite an old uni light. Just like uh, a button on the front and it's plastic and there's writing on it. IL six R. So those they used to have them in the plumbers merchants. Mm. And I always remember this was years. Is that ago. the one with the kickstand? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, you yeah. go in and it's yeah. on the counter, you turn it on and immediately blind yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my first experience with Unilight and never liked you. Good yeah. times. <laughs> well, my Still first one like was bumping into you at Elex. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd seen Still bits. doesn't like me now. <laughs> <laughs> Still doesn't like me, yeah. The um was obviously once I got onto the social media area and then Instagram, because I only started Instagram up because of YouTube. Like, I never yeah. really did Instagram personally anyway. I had a, an account, never went on it. And I realised it's very good for jump between the two, isn't it? Like if you want to push one thing, you Every, can everybody both. starts on a different one. Like yeah, I, I started on Twitter, didn't I? Ours was primarily Twitter, yeah. and then I realised it was just full of shit. That's poison. Like, oh, it's just yeah. Yeah. it's basically like Donald Trump, MAGA, all that sort of yeah. stuff. And then f forget anything else. So I just I, I moved off there, went to Facebook, and then realised that the engagement was so low. I can't on Facebook. deal with Facebook. I can't. But, in, but Instagram was like a mixture of all of them, so you yeah. could comment, you could. Put a video People just on. seem nice on Instagram. They yeah. genuinely seem nice. I say the difference between Instagram and Twitter is you put something on Instagram and people say, nice job, like what you've done there, and it's positive. You put the same thing on Twitter, that's what you say, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> they just, yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I feel like the same. God, like, head off, he's going to hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that one. I'm in fine. trouble being on it. just said the same <laughs> oh, No, I mean, but I totally agree. Like, from, from a Nipex UK point of view, we, start, we had Facebook. And again, the engagement's like. Mm. Do, you, do, you run, do you run all of? Yeah, I run all of the, the UK ones. Yeah. Oh, and then, so it's you from speaking to you. On a, is it when I'm message? Oh, God, that's awkward. What are you wearing, later? Yeah. <laughs> Can I have a free pair of Cobras, please? <laughs> this was like yeah. mutual. No. Um, yeah, and then we went on Instagram, and it was just like, cool. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Like yeah. the feedback we've got on there is incredible. Yeah, I remember because yeah. you, when you first started the Instagram account, and now you're like, you've got more followers than me, which. I oh, know you're I'm not, not happy family. about. Sorry, mate. He's, he's got, more, really he's got more followers. At one point, we had more followers than them. They got more followers. Than and them. he's done it without doing a giveaway every other day. <laughs> giveaway. Oh. <laughs> Look, it's every, it's every week. Mate. It's every week. Mate. I'm the lowest Instagrammer here. I think I've just yeah. about hit 20k. And you're what are you? Yeah. Now? So Six. we talk about it. It was like the upper, the middle, and the lower. Oh, oh God. <laughs> you're the lower. I, know that. I mean, you're lucky we're talking to you. No, I mean to, to be fair, every, everybody like find stuff at different times. Like if I look at our YouTube, we've only got, is it 250 subscribers, something like that. But we haven't really, we haven't really put the effort in. You've like got to find your main like thing. TikTok yeah. as well. Yeah. Like obviously TikTok's new to this us. This is for so children. Like, so yeah, I don't have any fully. Oh, I've only got two, use it, 200 yeah. followers on there. So I'm obviously not a kid. How many have you got, Pete? Just saying. On TikTok? Just saying. Uh, 20,000, but I've got no idea what content is good for TikTok. Good for kids. Just saying. <clears throat> I, put, I put a video on. Of me, um, I spray painted the VW badge on my van black. Oh with yeah, some yeah. plastic, plastic dip. Two point nine million views. Really? Yeah. Really. But I don't know why. Um, probably so what's to do with the music and well, maybe, stuff maybe all the no, the music like was my own music. It was just a hip hop the, track I got off YouTube. Or the oh, I thought you written your own song. Then. That's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Hello, my name is Pete. Pete, 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 but That's I think I think it's because a lot of people were saying it looked better before I sprayed it. Oh, so all oh, right, just negative. Uh, click TikTok, TikTok, TikTok is similar to Twitter. There's a lot of negative. I, I haven't dabbled in it. I know that the head office is come on. I do. On you get. I just I, on you get. You can help. You can time. help if you figure it out. You can help me out because oh. we're. Gosh, surely you guys know how to do it. <laughs> our, our surely. biggest our biggest video was ironically was Nathan. And Jack the racing in the in the car park, running in the yes. car park with just a uni light, nothing to do with product, just running in the car park. And I was like, I yeah, I was like, I'll give up. Yeah, I've no up. idea. I've, it's yeah. too much for me. But yeah. like, yeah, Instagram if anyone's listening and big on TikTok, can you let me know how you do it? But the, what you're saying about the the comments, of people coming back and putting bad comments on it. What people don't understand, which you know and I know now, is, and you might know this as well. Any comment on any type of video is interaction. Mm or a thumbs up or a thumbs down is interaction. So, Ratio. Yeah, it means the same. So to anyone out there thinking, oh, I don't like, let's say you always get that one back thumb down at you in the first minute. I get three in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. Same three guys. They've it's got, all... they've obviously got me on notifications or whatever yeah. it is. That's so me, that's great Scan for me. Grip and Lead Lenser. 
<laughs> what did they get out of it? I don't, I don't I know. They just what sat there in their underpants in their really mum's basement and they're like, oh yeah, come on, PB, release that video. It's half Sunday six. at six. Sunday at six. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> yes, got him. But what they like, don't understand is they're helping you. Yeah. They, they, it, like people think they want to troll you and they want to write horrible things. They want to do this. Every time you comment, watch, or interact with it, you're helping us push the video well, more. Hopefully now, because we haven't had a thumbs down on the first podcast no so hopefully we get a few well, when i time. when i put it on my youtube video on sunday and tell people to watch it those three guys that thumbs down my stuff will come mm -hmm. across thanks guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there's a lot of stuff in youtube that people don't understand and mm. with content is by sharing it you know we have a lot of people not so much my stuff but some of the other sparks there's electricians forums or forums online on websites where they will screenshot our stuff or put a link and go, oh, well, look at this idiot. He's used Flexi Conjure on stuff. Yeah. And there's a couple hundred people on there and they're all going, oh, look, at he's a this, that, and the other. Carry on, carry on, guys. All you're doing is filling my pockets with more money because you're watching it and commenting on it more. And yeah. they don't understand that. They want to give you the help, you know, crap for it. Fine. Carry on. It makes them feel better. Yeah. They wouldn't say it to your face, though. That's what I find. I know. So... Give you a fuck, thumbs down. You fuck you. those guys. <laughs> if you're watching this, give us your thumbs down. And this is gonna have to have an over 18 yeah. rated for oh, Pete's yeah. um, language. I'm so, really worried. <laughs> David, no, sorry. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So you, as a company, yes. not an individual, as a company, Nipex UK, you're, you've grown your social media account pretty fast to get to 60, 61k. Is it now? It's more than that. I what, think should we have a look? I should know that. What's your, we went over sixty last week. Yeah. So what? What? So what's the? Congratulations. What's the most popular? The most effective thing you do? Is it just showing a new tool, or is it a video of someone using a tool? What's yeah, it's tricky, really. Like the Six, tool. Sixty-one point three. Oh, wicked! Thanks. Um, I should know that. But um, yeah, like the tool cases. You see the like the tool case posts that we do. Yeah. People love it. People mm. just love tools. So it's. It's great. You know, the more tools are showed, the better. So the do you do get, just really. not just much posts and stories, but because you do a few of the is it Insta stories, as, not the stories. Sorry, Reels is Reels. the new thing. Yeah. Is that good? Because I don't do any of that, so I don't really know much Reels about. is apparently the new thing. Yeah. Like, so because of TikTok, my understanding is that the Reels, the trying algorithm to, is, yeah, yeah. Trying is to compete. preferred. Um, right. But from the UK account, we haven't done any Reels as of yet. That's more of a head office thing. Because some, some people listening or sort of watching this are going to be like, I want to start my own YouTube. What's the recipe for it? But the most important thing, if you're thinking about doing anything on social media, Instagram, Twitter, a YouTube, a TikTok, whatever you're thinking about doing, stop thinking about it and just do it. Just get on with it. Mm -hmm. You just, just got to get your content out there because the sooner you do, you know, you, your first video is not going to blow up unless you're lucky. You've got to regularly start getting content out there. Cons that's the thing, yeah, consistency. Like you're saying, what's the success for us is we post every day. Yeah, um, and that's one of the key things. Consistency yeah. is the main thing. Plus, you'll learn as you go. Because, like um, you said, the, the algorithm or the matrix, they will help you if you're if you're yeah, um, if you're constantly engaging with it. You're yeah. bringing people back onto the platform who therefore are watching adverts. That's how they get would, their money. Would, so, would you say that so, sort of side of things, the social media side, has that definitely helped you over here in the UK? Because massively, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. The work that the guys have done at head office, plus them with each country if it's manageable, have got their own regional, local Instagram account. It's helped all of our all of our regions out mm. massively. We, yeah, we it's crazy. Yeah. Well, I, sp I spoke about this with Louis from Fix Radio because obviously they've partnered with us. And I said to him, I said, the one thing about going on the radio is every trade has got a radio. So I know I'm hitting a target oh, market. Nice. Whereas print media, for example, like the professional electricians, we spoke about this. You can put that magazine on a counter. Some people don't ever even open them. Yeah. They're they just the get the, the most of the time with a professional electrician without saying much saying how it is. Everyone opens it up and goes to the court on camera, the bit where it's the bodged jobs and pictures, and, and but then the guys just like the dear Deirdre part of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And, and now with social media, where we can put a video on, you can have a clickable link, you can know how many people in our analytics have seen that video, male or female, uh, age, location. You've got all this information that you can give to a sponsor and go, there you go. What can you get from a magazine? We don't know. I mean, because no, like, we're going to be exhibiting at Elex, obviously. Yeah, I was going to say, what about the trade shows? They for the well, older generation. Well, no, I don't think. Well, I it's think mix, now it's a because of a lot mm. of the work that you guys do as well, like you go there to create content as well, and it's an opportunity for us to create content, which I've never really thought about going to a trade show 
to create content for social media. It was traditionally to go to show people the tools face to face. But yeah. now you can do two. So it kind of gives you that little bit more added value. But it'd be really interesting to see what they're like coming back. Yeah. I don't know how it's going to go. I mean, yeah. it'd be interesting to see what people think who listen to this, if they can leave comments. I don't know if we can do mm. that, but if they leave comments, if they're going to go or so if, if it's of interest to them. Like, there's, there's a question then from Dave. Are you thinking or going to go to an exhibition if they open? So that's a... Yeah. yeah. I think it's, well, it's a bit of market research. Anyway. Bit of market yeah, research exactly, yeah. I need to get it somewhere as well. I've got a story about Nipex, actually. Oh, so this, <laughs> this, will be, this will be before your time, but the first ever trade show I went to was Install. I think they used to call it Install Alive at Coventry. Okay. And Nipex were there, which was brilliant. So I got to the Nipex stand and he's got all this kit out and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I want that, that and that. And he was like, oh, we don't sell them. So I've gone to a trade show and there's a tool stand there and he showed me all these great tools and mm. I'm like, yeah, I want them. You can't buy them. Yeah, we've changed that now. You yeah. can buy them. You can definitely <laughs> what, what buy were you, them. What were they thinking? Like, <laughs> oh, no. Because yeah. we go and you want to buy, you want to go and buy tools. That was one of the main things I had to do when I started this role is to try and get that sorted. So yeah. I'm really glad that we did because we were getting feedback like that. Some, like, some shows they don't let you though. Like you go to the NEC and they're a bit funny about it. I know in Las Vegas because the North American distributor for us is doing a show, but you can't sell there. Mm. That's crazy Stuff. to me. Yeah, in Germany they don't sell either. Yeah. So that's, we, that was the thing. We, like, we do in Germany. Though. We do. Oh. We go to Germany. <laughs> the head office for us were like, well, this is, we don't do this. Yeah. We were like, yeah, but we need to do this. So yeah. And we will. <laughs> and we saw it. So we saw it. And it's great now. Yeah. Obviously, there's limitations of what we can take, but yeah, we got new products and stuff. It's gonna be. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I mean, going back to you then, because obviously we touched on the YouTube thing. So Nipex is a brand. Yeah. A, how did you come to work at Nipex? Okay. What's your role? What's the type of stuff that you do? And what? Tell us a bit about the brand. So for anybody, ninety percent of people listening are gonna, you know, have heard of Nipex. I hope so. I think, well, think fingers fingers that. crossed otherwise yeah. uh, I really you'd be out of so. the job. But it's but. just just give us a bit of background story. A about the brand, how you came to be, what the type of stuff that you do, and sort of anything that you've got that's coming out that's gonna be exciting for anybody. Cool. Yeah, I can do that. You. So we Nipex is a German manufacturer, we're based in Wuppertal. Um and we specialise in pliers. So we've been going since eighteen eighty two. It's a family run business. It's in the fourth generation now, so Mr. Ralph Putsch, our leader. Uh, yeah, he's did great. You, did you just salute him? He's a great guy. <laughs> Ralph. I love that guy. No, he's a really salute Ralph. Honestly, great guy. Yeah. Um, and it's really like family orientated business. It's a real joy to work for him. Um, but like I say, we specialise in pliers, so we don't do tape measures. We don't do spirit levels. Like that's not our forte. We just focus on pliers. Um, and I think that's really important. That's what's important to us. And it just it, it's part of our DNA, really. Mm. Um, so yeah, I started in Nipex five and a half years ago. So I started out as the Northern sales rep. So I was driving around, going into branches, selling them the dream. Getting told um, that, sorry, I haven't got time to speak to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you make an appointment? Yes. Oh, well, are we not in? He's out. Oh, right. He's oh, out. So he, yeah, thanks, thanks for that. Just driven up to Aberdeen <laughs> for nothing. Um, but no, I did that and that was really important um, because it's helped me now as the marketing manager. So I've been marketing manager for two and a half years, I think. Um, we didn't have a UK marketing manager before, so it was a new new role created because of the likes of social media, and it's just it's evolved so much. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's really helped me understand how to deal with customers and how to deal with like the commercial side of it. Um, but I've also been in there on the branches. I've been speaking to the traders, the sparkers, the plumbers. I've been in there. I understand how they look, what they like, what they don't like. Um, Obviously, it's always evolving and always learning, but it's um, it's important for the job that I do yeah. now. So, I mean, in terms of the size of Nipex, then just give us a like a sort of figure or a scale of how many people are employed. What's the turnover? Maybe something where yeah. somebody listening doesn't sort of they might just see it in the local wholesaler and pay no attention to that. But yeah, obviously, yeah. for me, it's sort of when somebody says to me, "Well, actually, we turn over hundred million," or we you know, we've got 4,000 staff worldwide. Yeah. I just think, how does it get to that? So, I've not been, I'm not allowed to say how much we turn I over. I knew he was going to yeah. say that. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> Top that secret. Was, that was my one prep. They were like, don't tell that. Um, but we I have... Mean, uh, um, just, I mean, like, you, do, you know, I said to, to Joe, how much did it cost you for the equipment? It's not always about the figure, but I mean, you know, like, how, how many staff do you have? How yeah. many countries are you in? Because that, so, that gives people a sense of... Yeah, of course, yeah. Sense of scale. Scale, sure. Gives them context. We're in 105 countries, so we've got different 
subsidiaries. So, 105 countries. Yeah, yeah right. I said, how many countries is there? <laughs> so wow. my, that's amazing. Too, yeah, so, so like, really good. we've got different subsidiaries. So after Brexit, we've got Nipex Tools UK Limited. So that's who I work for. Yeah. Um, we've got the American team, KTLP. They're the biggest export. They're our biggest market. Yeah. Um, that team over there, great. Shout out to them if they listen. Um, really good. We've got Mexico, we've got India, Japan, China. Uh, yeah, I mean, a few chi- other subsidiaries. I mean, chi- China, because I mean, we sell some yeah. products that we make in China to China, but the domestic market there is such yeah. a minefield. So even having an operation there is like, yeah, you know, from my perspective, I know just how hard that is to to crack that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a massive operation basically mm. it's it's huge um we've got 1400 staff but the big stat for me is that we make last year 2020 how many we, pliers we made 12.7 million <laughs> pairs of pliers jesus oh. i mean so sat around the table obviously everybody knows everybody i mean i met you i met you on the on the tools yeah on the, on t- the tools, on the tools awards, awards yeah. absolutely smashed at a table <laughs> and we actually won our first ever award so that yeah. was that was quite cool. But you guys have known each other for quite some time, haven't you? Between how long have you known? We well, spoke for about two years through Instagram, really. Yeah, and we've done an Instagram live and bits and bobs. Yeah, we spoke properly. What in the past six months? Yeah, I literally rang him to beg him for YouTube advice. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a like? Yeah. Let me make some money. Thumbs up. I think it's like, how do I do, how do I do this? Because I'm obviously I do social media, but mm. it's difficult doing all of them Mm. so twitter i'm fine with instagram i'm absolutely fine with and then you go on youtube and it's like you've got to turn your phone the other way because i film everything on my phone i've not got any fancy 12 1200 quid rail equipment or anything like that (laughs) that's just the tip of the iceberg mate but um yeah i do everything on my phone so then if i'm filming something for instagram and then i've got to turn my phone do the same thing with my phone turned for youtube and then i was asking about how to monetize my videos and you know, can I, who puts the adverts on? Like, so I didn't realize. So say you're into like, what are you into? Fishing and pegging and stuff like that. <laughs> you will, you'll watch my video Sorry. and you won't get, you won't necessarily get a plumbing advert. You'll get an advert that's tailored to you. So it'd be a fishing advert yeah. or, yeah. you know, I'm waiting for this. Go on. Go on. I'm, I'm worried about. Go. I'm worried about his boss now. He's, he's, I'll keep it. He's fine. He's, he's, he's all right. He's all right. He so, hasn't said anything. Bad. He hasn't swore either. So you know, you'll get an advert for you because it's targeted at you, and YouTube put those adverts on. I don't have any control over that. So yeah. I was just and really, you know, it was really kind of you. you answered the phone. You gave me all the tips, and then it's that helped me. Big shot. You've got enough followers to speak to. Well, the thing is, it helped, <laughs> <laughs> it helped in the way because, You're like, up you, 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 you helped me in the come, Instagram PB stuff. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. With the YouTube stuff, because you already had a following of 20,000 or so on YouTube, so but you that, knew that's, that's the what basics. I'm, that's what amazes me, is it sort of, you didn't really, like, for anybody listening out there, part of that is you did know what you were doing, but you didn't. The thing with me is, like, I'm not mega confident about anything I do. I always think it's shit. And it surprises me when it does well. Um, and I like that I'm like that because I'm, you know, I like to be humble. So I just wanted to, you know, pick his brains and get some info from him. Mm. And rather than him be like, why well, should I help you? He's, he's helped me. And then you like, I help other people, help apprentices. It's nice to, to you know, to do that with other mm. people, especially people you don't know. Yeah. He didn't have to help me and he did. So then if he ever needs anything from me, like... Um, but that's how, that's how it should be. I find yeah. sometimes with yeah. social media, it's not like that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're, we're brands. I still talk to you. Like, I, I, I think some people think, well, oh, brands don't ever talk to each other. You know, I talk to Big Wipes. Is it Karina at Big Wipes? Yeah. You know, I talk to many different brands. Obviously, Tony at Velocity. I talk to loads of different people. Yeah. Um, it's good to network, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. of course it is. But yeah. there are people out there the who, who, won't, field, who don't want to help you. Like when I did my, the November Van Tool Theft campaign, there was a couple of YouTubers, plumbers, that did everything they could to not help. And in fact, one guy, so when you do a a petition to government, you get six months to get your 100,000 signatures. So I got this petition started and I was trying to just get it out to as many people as I could. One guy, um, my friend Glenn messaged another plumber who does YouTube and asked him to support it. And he said, no, I don't want anything to do with it. 
And then another guy was, at the time I was asking people to sign my petition, started asking his followers to sign another petition that was three years old. So it was out of date, couldn't do anything. Are we, we going to launch the new one now then? Do you want to launch it? I want to, la I want to launch another November campaign this year if I get time to sort it out. But it won't be a petition to government because I don't think they work. Um, I, I, I still think you do that, but then you do something else at the same I time. I think what we need to do is get a load of guys together. We're going to get, obviously Nick's going to help, so we'll have electricians joining in with plumbers. and pa we'll, Power tool will stick it on there. Power Ice tool, room. mate. Nipex are going to help. Yeah, well, we've, done, we've done it before in the past. Um, Head office, you are going to help. We're, we're and I think up. what we do is we get guys together and it'll be like a peaceful protest. We get a load of vans and we drive to somewhere like Citroen. Dave um, won't be at the process, just just, just so well. Yeah. Uh, and we drive Maybe to not. Ford <laughs> and we, you know, we dress the vans up with banners, whatever, don't steal my daddy's tools. And then we just hammer it all over social media just to get the notice. Yeah. Like I spoke to, um, was it Nick Ferrari on LBC? Mm. This politician, I, don't, I can't remember his name, is going to do a campaign. You know, nothing happened. I had, I went on the radio, spoke about it, and then I've heard absolutely nothing about it since. Like, do people not care or, you know, what is it? So I, I, I just think trades, when you've been at work all day and you come home, it's very, very difficult then to start trying to do something else. Like even for you guys trying to do your YouTube video on a Sunday or whenever it is that you edit. Yeah. It's a lot of work and I think, Every night. <laughs> I think I think I think a lot of people they, they want to do something but A don't know where to start or B they don't sort of the energy. they look for somebody else to sort of lead it. Yeah. So it's sort of the good thing is like you, your followers, my followers, with the, the the numbers combined of you get your plum guys to do it, I can get speak to all my YouTube sparks to do it. You then ask all the people that follow you that would happily if you yeah, guys can you share this for me, I think it would be quite doable to get 100,000 signatures now. But I think definitely this time, because the, the, the first two, t the, the first two times, the other two times I've done it, um, it was a petition to increase the sort of penalty for someone caught stealing tools or stealing a van. And to look at the sale of secondhand st stolen tools, car boot sales and stuff yeah. like that. But the police, they've not got the numbers to, to police it. They've got other more important things to do. So I don't even think that approach or maybe something where it's got a some pressure put onto manufacturers yeah exactly so the manufacturers i i believe should make a van that is fit for purpose for a tradesman and i'm not asking them to do it for free i think they should sell a security package so i, I go in for the new vw transporter you got the trend line or whatever it's called the high line which is the nicer one and then the sport line but then there should be a trade line which has got deadlocks factory fitted it's got a really good alarm factory fitted so they're not easy to get you know there's reinforced plates near all the locks why can't they do that and you pay for it but it comes out the comes out the factory almost impossible to get into mm. without cutting a hole in it why can't they do that I one, you it? know the, we, people would pay for it mm. yeah i think that's a good idea but it's also it's creating a kind of stigma around shopping around that if the demand's there people will continue to do it. That's the problem. It's the people oh, you mean it's the people that are buying yeah, the second hand It's the people that are going else. to the car boots. It's the people on the Facebook groups. Like, we all know that someone's mm. stolen goods. But you say that, but when I when so I was, um, I reckon I would have been 19, 20, and I was starting to buy my own tools, and I was interested in buying my own gear, I bought a circular saw, Makita, uh, without battery, off eBay. And it did not cross my mind until now when I've thought about it. That it might be and that's what I mean. So I think exactly the, the, the awareness raising of it might yeah. be a good. Or I, I don't think one thing is a solution, but I think it's an amalgamation or different attack approaches for it's it. Something I wanted it's to do ages ago with that is, is is make a list. I've seen a few things on different Facebook forums and whatnot. Is you and me get all our power tools out of our vans now. Every yeah. single one has a serial code number on it. Write them down. Take a picture of it. Store it away in your phone, on your iPad, on your computer, or whatever. Anything ever goes missing. You can upload all this to a website and if you go around a car boot someone goes around with a few pictures or anything that's been stolen you can easily identify what serial numbers goes to who and under whose address i think that would be a way forward but equally then you've got all the tool tracking systems as well haven't you now with the gps trackers yeah. and everything and 
I've got my van tracked, I've got a kill switch, so if someone drives away, the moment they turn the engine off, they can't turn it back on. There's all these different things, but the worst thing is the fear living in bed at night or on the sofa when my light goes outside. Of, oh, there we go, there's three guys sat outside breaking into my van again. Because yeah. I caught them doing it the last time they did it to mine. Uh, luckily, they didn't break anything other than they smashed the lock. But a few guys around my area, they bent the doors, they cut holes in the roof, they just written the guys' vans off. Mm. Yeah. They can't work them for weeks. And the scary thing is if you did catch them in the action, you went out to try and stop them, which you probably would, that would be your initial reaction, yeah. run out, what are you doing? And there's three guys then in front of you well, and they're is, prepared yeah. to smash your van to bits. What are they going to do to you? This yeah. is it. I had the two guys. I only saw the one, grabbed him. He had a uh, balaclava on, motorbike gloves, and he was crowbarring my van vaults open. I would then start scrapping with him. He was well and truly losing. And then his mate come out, who I didn't realise, who had a crowbar bigger than me, tried to smash my head in with it. And if that had hit me, and I said, I was talking to my kids about it the other day, if that had hit me, I'd have died, 100%. And then my three kids then grew up with that dad because I wanted to go out and save a thousand pounds with the power tools. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's finding what's right. And, I, and my other half was talking about it. And I was like, if I went out, if they did it tonight, I'd still run out there. I'd just be a bit more careful next time because just I ran out police. with a bigger bat. Oh, do you know, but I ran out there with slippers on, not knowing, going, what the hell's going on? But now it would be a different situation. Just run out naked. <laughs> Scare Hugging a lot of people. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> With the Baywatch theme in the background, yeah. yeah. Wearing that t-shirt. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> With the wig. But um, you Hiya! do. You, 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 <laughs> oh, my God. Save me. Save me. <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah. We'll leave it. The yeah. guy's like, go, go, go! <laughs> Well, they just come into the house, one of the two. Oh. Um, I'm surprised they didn't think you were Batman coming out in your Batman slippers. <laughs> no, no, they were, they were Primark, the Primark the specials. But, Darkness um, is your ally. <laughs> that was Bane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thanks. I got it, don't worry. About it. Thanks. It's, it, it's the fear of what could have happened or what could happen. And it's, I'm not going to be the first person to happen. To, well, I'm not the first person. But equally, I came off very lucky. They didn't steal anything. I got away with my face intact yeah. and they didn't steal anything. To then find out that four or five people around Stafford that night also had their stuff broken into by a Ford Transit Custom yeah. uh, Connect, which was the same one that tried to get in mine. So even when I rang the police, they left mine, went to the other end of Stafford, and still broken into people's tools. Yeah. I was like, well, it, nothing, do you yeah. know what I mean? Every police officer, I spoke to the Crime Commissioner, they just say they've not got the numbers all the time to, to do it. Which so. is a shit, and I can't blame them for it. It's not no. their fault. It's just very frustrating from our point of view of no one's safe. Literally no one's safe. Our neighbour's shed got broken into for no reason whatsoever. And they just took the lawnmower. And there was a, there's always little spells, you know. There's always little, they'll do Stafford from where I'm from. They'll go on the motorway, they'll do the next town. And the worst thing was, is the very first time I got broken into, they took everything. And I think I've said to you before, it wasn't just my power tools, my dad had only just passed away and I had some of his in Makita Radio and some of my dad's tools that I had. They stole all them and that's not replaceable, right. yeah. which, is, which sucks. And um, I replaced all the stuff, thought, right, it's happened now, it's never gonna happen again. Three, three and a half weeks later when I'd replaced and spent thousands more, they would stole all the new stuff. Yeah. They know exactly what yeah, they're Yeah, they know that you're gonna replace it yeah. and yeah, they just- And it's full to up. me and then it just, I just made sure it didn't happen again. Got more protection and it so spent thousands. We'll start it start it now or get everybody on board before we launch the petition so if you speak to hq because obviously what was it what was his name the the chief that we have to salute mr ralph putch mr ralph putch <laughs> we you need are. your ralph putch we need your help anyone who's got any ideas what we can do uh, anyone who wants to get involved anyone who's wants to help with you know spreading the word on their social channels you know the more the merrier yeah so uh same for i'll do everything well. i can you know Let's well. do it Rhino Trade Insurance sponsors Trade Legends, the best insurance for insuring your van and your tools. Keep them safe, and you know what they say, don't be a fool, insure your tool. So I want to go back, because obviously we've, we've touched on that, it's got a bit serious, but I want to go back to something that I find really, really funny, which was, I was talking to you outside about YouTube videos, and talking to you about stuff that's really weird, or something that's made you laugh, something that's completely out of the blue. And I want to turn to the TV and get you to watch okay. this video. If you can put it full screen for me, Jack, and we'll put this in for anybody that's uh, watching on YouTube, and we're just going to listen to this. And this is the type of thing that really makes me laugh in a video. All so right, we just come out of city plumbing. We got it, we got it. 
Right, so there it is. There's a star to show. How much? Let's see this how much it cost. £61.20 from City Plumbing. Yeah, make use of those old shaving blades. Don't throw them away. Huh? Use them to open the boxes. You know, it's all about recycling. Recycle. Make use of what you have. Oh, sorry Thank about you, that. Pardon. Guess. <laughs> Did you just do that? <laughs> Did that just happen? Take it back one more time. <laughs> <laughs> just take it. Was I oblivious then? I wasn't sure if that was in the room or that was just on the listen, video. Listen to the words. Listen to the words. Use them to open the boxes. You know, it's all about recycling. Recycle. Make use of what you have. Oh, sorry about that. I guess. <laughs> It did happen. <laughs> it happened. And we stumbled across this the other day. Like everybody was into, I need to find out who he is and actually send him a product and say it's the best video that I've ever watched. But you remember you said out there about stuff that goes wrong in videos, but this, this is- this Can't is, you edit? It makes mine more funny now as well, what I said. So we, we watched this and obviously like, you know, stuff that goes wrong, all that sort of stuff. Because everybody watches these videos and they see them and they think, yeah, it's so polished. But certain times it's like not. that, obviously that that video, <laughs> that was incredible. It, was, uh, it was one of these things where he said to me, you've got to come and watch this. And we watched it. And I just wanted to find out if there's anything for people listening or watching, video wise, that sometimes doesn't make the cut. Sometimes he's mentioned in a comment, something that like, you know, you did mention to me about farting before. Well, this is it. Yeah, we've had quite a few of one farting things. Where, so I like to do a bit of crop dusting with Adam. So yeah. as I'm walking past, I'll fart slowly as I go past him. And then by the time I've got out somewhere, he'll go, what was that? <laughs> and um, we, we, nice. yeah, we, we do a thing. My brother told me this years ago and uh, he said, whenever you fart in public or around friends or anything, he says, always go. You smell popcorn, and every person in the room would always go. I oh, can. Well, that, like, instantly, <laughs> everyone gets a nose full. Deep breath. Yeah. So next time you, you drop, you, you drop, don't you even go. need to do a yeah. gag now. It's just be like Nick Bundy says. Can you smell? You need to get that as a sticker. You need to get that as a sticker. And it was, and, and it's true. And now all my friends always do it, and my kids do it now as well, which is the worst. Mm. Um, I know. Butter kissed. <laughs> it's not um, Sweet and uh, salty. Does it work? Oh, absolutely every time. Every time. So. I eat quite a lot of protein. That's my main what I eat during the day. And Cuts people always choice, assume. Cut to the you, <laughs> people I fart are, a lot. People always assume you're going to fart a lot. Well, I I hardly ever fart. Like okay. I don't think I farted today. Hmm. Now I'm on this job for four weeks, and one oh. day, okay. <laughs> one day I'm in this. I'm in the plant room, and I'm piping up whatever, oh. and, I, and I farted, and it abs. It stunk like baby shit. It was. It was. Oh. It was disgusting. That's awful. And this chip, he walked in. And he, he had to leave the room and then he he's not let me forget it. I've been on the job <laughs> for four weeks and I've done one personally <laughs> so I've done one <laughs> fart. <laughs> I've done one fart and he won't let he won't he won't shut up about it. And I said to his mate the other day, he's like, Oh, um, oh, he, he's disgusting, he fought he's distinct and his mate went, Oh, did, did he give you a warning before he came in? I thought Yeah, does it smell of popcorn in it? Yeah, <laughs> mate. On your Instagram story, next time you, if you ever fart on a job, just go. But to your, because you always yeah. do skits with your mates, and it's really good. Like, you smell popcorn. Just oh, and honestly, as soon as you start doing it, you won't ever stop. I don't know what you said. I shouldn't have showed that video. He said Germany's going to hate you. They'd be like, "What kind oh, no. of show? Why are you You've just it? dragged our hey. name <laughs> through the gutter." Hey, everybody farts. Yep. Everybody's shit stinks. Fact. Mm. So why why not talk about it? Yep. Facts. Fact. We had this conversation. <laughs> <apparently>. <laughs> dropping facts. Yeah. <laughs> right. Completely obsessed. Into the microphone. Give us your best fart. <laughs> 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 Three, two, one. <laughs> right, let me do my joke. Shall I do my joke now? Right, dagger of the day. And then we're going to get on to the. Um, yeah, we'll do. We'll, we'll do that. What time are we on anyway? Yeah, we've got we've got time. So, gag of the day. Right, PB Plumber. So, episode two. I used to be in a band called Missing Cat. You might have seen our posters around. <laughs> I'd be so bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Oh. <laughs> Come on, here's a joke on the spot. Hey, here we go. I'll, um, I'll give you one. Go on. Why did the cockle 
go to the toilet. Because that's where all the cocks hang out. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm so good at this. <laughs> Nathan was like, oh, God, Al, come on. Right, this one is this one is probably not Nipex friendly. Okay, we'll for, cut for this. Your, your, this, <laughs> this one might get cut out. So last year, um, I went on holiday in France and took part in a strawberry crushing contest. I came second. A woman with no legs won it. Oh, oh, do you know what's even worse? The Paralympics is on as well. Oh, at the <laughs> Please definitely cut that. <laughs> he loves that's his favourite one. I can that's tell. He's like, one. yeah, that one's that one's a keeper. No yeah. more sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, just before we finish, is there anything? So I wanted to just quickly jump back to you. Is there any new products? Because I know people watch it again, just in case they haven't seen stuff on social. Want to talk us through anything that's new that you sort of want to just quickly show off? Yeah, that, I'll do it super people... quick because I don't want to be too like corporate and salesy. Yeah. But we've got four new products, four hero products that we call them, yeah. uh, that have come out for 2021. Uh, I don't know what camera is best to show them. I would go direction. These at the back. This one. Here. Can we see that? Sweet. So we've got a cut X. It's a box cutting knife. Yeah. Um, but it's got this stabilization rail, which I was telling you about earlier. So it gives it stability. Um, which is good. You can use push on the back, use force. Uh, it's got replaceable blades in it. You can use your standard blades. So that's a cool bit of kit. Uh, we've got the Bix. When, when is, does that one come out? So this one's already out. Right. This one's already out. The Cutix at the moment. Available at all good wholesalers. Exactly. Same with the Bix. Um, but to be fair, they all sold out within a week. So there was a there was a delay. Both of these sold out within the this first. Is, this week. is metal, by the way. It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's magnesium. It's, yeah, it's nice to feel. To be fair. Yeah, it's a, it's got a nice weight to it. So when are they going to be back in stock soon? Yeah, they've just landed this week. Yeah. So, yeah, they're good. Um, the Bix is a conduit cutter. It does from twenty to fifty mil, but you can also move the blade on the inside. Um, so it's in the middle at the moment, but you can move it to the outside. So if you're working flush on on a wall or something. It's for sealing sleeves in Europe, but there's other applications so I'm sure it could be used. And you can just twist it and it gives you a nice clean yeah. cut. Flexible you conduit know. as well, yeah? Exactly, yeah, flexible <laughs> conduit. <laughs> nice. yeah. Nick's like flexible conduit. <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, we've got the Plies Re Wrench XS. So we had yeah. the Cobra XS last year, which had a lot of success. You were you were a big, big fan of that. It. You, not so much, maybe. Well, well, not, for, not for my job, I don't yeah. think. It's too, it's, it, we don't need something that small, so. Well, we brought out another really small thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just to try and tempt you yeah, once again. You might like this one. But yeah, the pliers wrench XS. This is a popular one. I do like the pliers wrench. Yeah, the 250 and 180s um, are a popular side for the plumbers. But they, are they out now? No. Well, uh, yes, actually. Yeah. They've landed just so now all, at the all, moment. all the ones that you've shown so far are The out. first three are, yeah. yeah. The next one is isn't. Not, isn't not yet. Which when's, is, when's this one due? So this one is due in October. Right. Fingers crossed. Uh, will, but will, this, will this be at Elex? Are you at Elex or installer? We're at both. Yeah. It'll be there to see and yeah. touch, okay. but not to buy because it's not Great. ready. Other tools are there to yeah. buy. Good. It's just because we haven't got it yet. Yeah. Um, okay. But it comes out in October. Um, yeah, this was launched for the American market, um, but we've seen so much interest in it straight away. Um, it's basically got front and side gripping. Um, it looks class as well. Yeah. Really chuffed with it. And it's. Uh, I think it would be about 25 quid. Yeah. So um, what's, what's a rough sort of, obviously I know everybody sells everything for different prices, but what's, just give us a sort of idea of what the cost of some of these are for people watching. Yeah, Twin Grip 25, I think the Bix is around the same, around about 25-ish. Uh, the Cutix is around about 20, and the Plies Wrench I think would be about 45. So all, Roughly, but yeah. it depends. So all, all affordable it. stuff. So that's the, the new stuff coming from Nipex, well, Knipex, because I don't want to get told off by uh, Mr. Yeah. Salute. Um, so if you want to see any of that, installer. Yeah, installer Electra, and tool fair. Which is at Coventry Rico Arena for Correct. both, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. tool fair is like half electrics, half tools, isn't it? Correct, yeah, yeah. Is, Where's the plumbing? No, oh, not really. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> we get our installer shows three days of just plumbing. Oh, do you actually? Yeah, electricians, you get half a show you have to share with uh, with another, because it's not as popular. I hate to break it to you, Pete, but I think there's an electrical bit now. In? In installer, yeah. Is there? Is there? Yeah. Which camera do I need to look at for this? <laughs> That's for I'm his, really his sorry. Plum and chums. But yeah, it's plumbing. Yeah, I mean, the, have you, you've been to an Alex show before? Yeah. So it's just light bulbs, basically. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of light bulbs. Oh, let's go deep. Come on, then. So 
that, that wraps that, that yeah. little segment up. Yeah. I just okay. want to see who's won the... Uh, the um, you, you've been itching yeah. ever since we first came in here. Okay, then. So let's go. Let's get these uh, for everybody listening, because I need to explain this every time. Getting the white strip of paper out, because Nick and Dave both did their fastest lap around the Bahrain circuit. And they both spent about an hour longer than I got when mm. I did my lap. Too. Lies. Secrets and lies. Some, somebody sounds really bitter. <laughs> how, how, how have we written these up here? Let's have a little look. Why is so mine so shit? That, oh, that, has someone changed that? I wasn't that far. You've got that was, slower. That was, yeah, yeah, I was like 103 before. You have written the wrong time up there. Was that right. deliberate? I think <laughs> that was I he's think written Dave, the wrong time. I think Dave's changed it. It was, it was, one, oh. it was 102, but 108 sounds better for you, Pete. So... Uh, Taken the I like it how you tried to blame that on me as well. <laughs> Thanks for that. As soon as I walked in, where's the pen? Where's the pen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't think you'll like that. <laughs> um, so, we're going to have David up first. I haven't got a lot of faith in myself here, to be honest. I don't know why, but I wrote the A first. So, David and uh, we'll write Nipex. Knipex. Knipex for the boss. You did it in A1. That's a good start. Zero. Oh, hello. One. Oh, no oh. way. Oh. <laughs> Two, eight, seven. Oh, nice. Oh, no oh, way. Legend. I honestly didn't see that coming. Oh, oh, for God's sake, man. I don't even play <laughs> racing games. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Slap there you go, console. Pete. There you go, it's going on the top, isn't it? So Pete's now sticking Dave at the top of the leaderboard. So uh, Nipex HQ is going to be happy with you, even though we Have talked we about it? farting for a segment of about <laughs> 15, 20 minutes. I'll take that. Might That's have to it. write a little bit more on the D up there in a bit, Pete, but we've. Uh, We'll go with that. So now, Richard. next up. Mm, brilliant. To piss on David's fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. Please don't piss off. <laughs> because I hate news and it's, it's awful. Nick Bundy. Oh wow. You did your lap. One. Oh. Zero. One. Oh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You ready? Five, one, nine. Oh, that's crap. Oh, second. That's oh. crap. Ladies and gentlemen, Nipex is your current leader. Nice. I'll take yes. that. Thank you. Yeah, and well, I'll take all these. Well done, Dave. <laughs> so let's get Pete, you're going to have to move some of these down, mate, oh, because you keep going up to the top. I'm definitely having another go, though. That's decent of us, though, just rocking up. Yeah, straight going out. Straight. First, I, first. I will, uh, I will be honest, you had slightly longer than the others. Oh, but, oh here we go. But, but here we go. the leaderboard's the leaderboard. I had Pete Mia doing TikToks, I couldn't concentrate. And to be fair, you had me dressed yeah. as Pamela Anderson <laughs> in a Baywatch. <laughs> around as Baywatch. <laughs> there we go. Lewis so, Hamilton doesn't have this shit. So that's all done now, and what we're going to go and do is we're going to go and do our... Power Tool make prizes. So okay. Power Tool is one of our sponsors and they are a place where you can go buy Power Tools, obviously. And yep. if you want to get your hands on a big tool, Pete, where'd you go? Power Tool. Power mate. Tool, mate. And on Trade Legends this month, we've got prizes, a case of beers, Unilite products, Trad clothing, and we've got some Nipex gear as well for you. And as always, the £250 voucher that you can win for Power Tool make prizes. And for full details on how to win all of these prizes this month, check out the comments below on the YouTube or via the website www.tradelegends.uk. Okay, so we're going to go over and Nick's going to shoot six darts, you're going to shoot six darts, and then we're going to see A, who gets the highest score, okay. and then we're going to do the combined score. So whoever gets closest and guesses the combined score, that's what we're going to go with. So first up, please. Nick oh, Bundy, yeah. up you get. Take these for, off you. Yeah, for Bundy Electrical, here he comes. Let's play darts. Do it diamonds coming back away. This is going to be tragic. Pete's running for his life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come around here and see where... 
Undy's chair. You're scooching. Just, Nick, I don't know why I'm Nick moving. just put the Unless chair in for bad. us, just in case. Just, put, just push the chair in, that's it. That's it, that's it. <laughs> Craig might get one on his leg if he's a bit... So, ladies and, gen- then, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, stepping up to the uh, to the line is Monsieur Bundy, also known as Notorious Nick Bundy. Bundy to throw. <laughs> Silence, please. Silence. Group together enough? Pete, you're good okay. at counting the scores. Here comes Carol Vorderman, yeah, well, I'll... the Carol Vorderman of the Trade Legends <laughs> podcast show. Did you see that tweet Carol Vorderman did the other day? I don't look at Carol Vorderman's tweet, I just look at Carol Vorderman. Oh. Even at 75 years old or however old she is. Don't mention it out loud and please confer, <laughs> yeah. confer to... Uh... On this uh, audio format, don't, don't say what it is. <laughs> Next up, from Nipex. Oh, is he going to beat me again? Oh, here we go. Here he comes. Dangerous. Dangerous Dave. Dave. What? Why have I got the... Could you, oh, did you put that? Could, <laughs> could, you, could you imagine <laughs> now if you beat your on back? <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't. Yeah. This feels really hard. So, then we can test Dave to throw. These are warm, Dave. <sighs> oh, brilliant. And he's in the mix with his six. Nice. Well done, Dave. Wow. Beaten twice on yeah. the same show. Give me an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to win. <laughs> Damn. I think you've kicked Pete's, my ass then. Pete's totally not up. Yeah. Numbers aren't good with numbers. Are you more are. Rachel Riley or Carol Vorderman, Pete? Which one are you? So mine, you probably won't even know who it is, but her name's Susanna Lipscomb, and she's a British historian. She's sometimes on the news. She's got curly... How do you... You knew the guy of Country File as well when she mentioned it yeah, last yeah. time. Oh. Yeah. 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 That was her when she was 19, Pete. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what did she present? Susanna Lips, come if you're watching. PB Plumber Instagram. He will fix your yes. leaky pipe. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll wrap it up there. Big thank you to coming on to no, both you. of you. Obviously, no. really interesting for me to hear about you with the YouTube and stuff like that. It's sort of... Uh, you know, for anybody watching, I'm sure they'll be like, they watch the videos, they don't see the stuff that goes on behind it. Obviously, all the stuff that made you start. Yeah. Obviously, that's yeah, yeah. like, I didn't even know that. So that's that's interesting to me. Obviously, you coming on as a, as a brand, um, you know, some other brands that I, I sort of look at myself personally on the internet and I go, amazing products, love the brand, love the stuff you do on the UK side. Or used to do until this goes out. Yeah, until, until, until yeah. Mr. <laughs> Mr. If anyone needs a marketing manager. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's about it. That wraps up episode two. We're going to go for the traditional after-show dinner. Wonderful. Thank you very Lovely. much. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you for listening to the Trade Legends podcast. Bloody marvelous. With thanks to our sponsors, Church Farm Brewery, the best beers in town. Also, Power Tool Mate. If you want to get your hands on a really good tool, it's the only place to shop. Lastly, our good friends Fix Radio, the only radio station specifically for the trade in the UK.